Welcome to Pop Paul's Workshop. One of the things that I absolutely love about having a CNC machine is that I can come back and carve the same project over and over. About three years ago, in fact, long before I was even doing this YouTube channel, I carved a sign for an address. And after three years plus, that sign that looks a little bit worse than wear, and it was time to be able to do another one. So I was able to just pull that file and carve a new one today. And I just want to do a real quick video to show you how I reset it up, changed a couple of little things, and did the carving. <laughs> Let's get started. Before we get started, I need to ask you guys a real big favor. Recently, YouTube has changed their algorithms and it's made it increasingly difficult to be able to get my videos out so that everybody can see them. So I'm reaching out to everyone in the community to be able to please, if you like my videos and like what I'm showing and demonstrating and teaching in my woodworking and the CNC projects, please, Give me a like, share this video with as many people as you can, and subscribe to my channel. This will help trigger those algorithms so that I'll be able to continue to teach and share my enthusiasm for the woodworking and the CNC world. And I want to thank you very much for the support of this channel. What you guys are doing really is making a difference. So thank you very much. Now, let's get back to today's project. Now this is the actual sign that, kept, that I took off of the uh, mailbox. And for lasting over three years, it's actually held up quite well. You can see where over time the paint has actually started to peel off from being in the direct sunlight every day. But, uh, and it has warped. You can see where this material has warped because this is actually pine or it may have been poplar. Quite frankly, I don't remember exactly. But I think you can see that overall, being in the elements every single day for over three years, this sign actually held up pretty well. But it is time for a new one. Now, could I have saved it? Yes, I probably could. I could probably just sand this down, get all the old dirt, and grime off of it and repaint it and it would have probably lasted another three years or more who knows but I think I'm gonna go ahead and replace this and today what I'm going to do is replace this with a sign that's made out of the PVC now the material that I'm going to use today is PVC it's a trim board that you can usually pick up at your local big box store such as the Home Depot or Lowe's, and I think actually Menards in other parts of the country carry it. I don't have a Menards in this area. But it is something that's readily available. It's typically used for trim uh, on houses, and it's just a trim board. And it's seven and a quarter inches wide, and you can get it in uh, the longer lengths. I'm not sure exactly how long this one was when I purchased it, but it was at least eight or ten feet long. So you can check over in those different departments where the lumber is and you will more than likely find these trim boards. And being the PVC, this should last for a long, long time. We're going to find out over the next three years. Now I opened up easel and had to go way, way back to be able to find this file. But this was the original file that I had with the work pieces at the bottom and how I had carved it. But the PVC board is actually just a little bit smaller. I don't have the 11 and a quarter inches that you see from the original sign. So I needed to downsize it. So I just copied and brought it over into a new work piece. And I set this up for my 7 and an eighth inch wide to be able to carve this. And I made my board 14 inches by the 7 and an eighth. And still, this is 3 quarters of an inch uh, thick. Now, as far as the cut settings, I'm going to be cutting this at 80 inches per minute, and my depth per pass is going to be 0.085. Now, I'm going to be carv carving this pocket 
at a 0.1 of an inch, which means the bulk of that will get cut on the first pass, and then it'll come back for a, in essence, a clean uh, clearing pass to be able to clean up that last little bit to make a perfectly smooth bottom. And guys, you're gonna see in a moment, this worked fantastic. Now I'm carving this using an eighth inch bit, and I'm also using the glue and tape method. But I noticed a little bit of a bow in this PVC, so I put the uh, bump stops down just in case I had any movement at all. Now I realized I got a little bit ahead of myself because I really wanted to use this Auric Mask 813 to be able to put down so that once the carving was completed, I could just spray paint this and it makes it a lot easier. But I put it down and forgot to put the masking on. So I had to move the CNC machine out of the way and go ahead and put the masking on a little bit after the fact. But this is a small project and it really wasn't too much of a big deal. So I just went ahead and cut the uh, masking to the size and put it on without taking the PVC board off of the uh, CNC machine. Now when you use this masking, it's a good idea to be able to take some type of a um, scraper or an old credit card and really make this stick well to the PVC. And you can see here, I'm just using my thumb and I did have a problem in the carving that you'll see in just a moment with the letter one where it started to peel off a little bit. So that's a lesson learned. Make sure that you use something that uh, more than your thumb that will really make this masking stick well. Other than that, there was no problem in being able to use this material. But now it's time to go ahead and get back to where I was and go ahead and carve it. Now I had already set the X, Y axis and uh, the Z axis was already set before I realized what had happened. So I just wanted to verify that I moved it back to the correct location and now I can go ahead and start the uh, carving. As far as the speed of the router, some people may question this. It is on the one setting. That's very important. There really, in very, very few cases, do you ever need to go beyond this, the setting of one for the speed of the router. So at this point, it's just a matter of watching it go through the carving action. I did set this up to be able to carve on the two passes. Now just as a reminder, this is carving down at 0 0.085. The total cut depth is 0.1 of an inch. So that means there's 15 thousandths that it's going to be able to come back and do that clearing pass and that will make the bottom of this uh, pocket very, very clean. That's something that you might want to think about when you're planning the carvings to be able to do that little bit of a clearing pass on the very end so that uh, you can do that in one step rather than having to come back and do it as a separate step. Because I'm, <laughs> I, quite frankly, I've done that before also. Now, if you look at the top of the letter one, the masking actually came loose a little bit. And that's the only place that it actually turned loose and was not holding down very, very well. So again, you've got to be able to use some type of a scraper or an old credit card, something that you can really make sure that the masking sticks well to the PVC. Other than that, there wasn't any problem with the carving whatsoever. Now, if you look at the number two, you can see how crisp and uh, clean that that cut is made on the masking. That's really what you're looking for. And if you look at the one, you can see where it came off at the top. And on the left side of the one, it actually did not cut the masking as well as on that left side of that pocket. That's all indicative of not being able to get that masking down really good and secure. And it ended up peeling up rather than being cut off. But as you can see with the number two, it did just what it was supposed to do. And I want to give you one more example. There at the bottom underneath the letter two, as the router came past that little bit of the masking, you can see where it just pushed it out of the way and it didn't cut it off. So again, I hope that is a good lesson learned for you that that masking needs to be really stuck down well to your project 
before the carving. Because in most of the places where that was done, the masking worked extremely well and it was cut leaving a very crisp line around the numbers of the two and the five and for that matter most of the letter one. Now once it completed that first pass it came back to do that second pass at that 15 thousandths and you can I don't know if you're going to really be able to see this in the camera well but it's just cutting just that little tiny bit off and it's really smoothing up the surface of this pocket very very nicely. I wish there was a better way to be able to show this to you. Now I'm going to zoom in real close with the camera to see if you can see that. But you can see, hopefully, that that clearing pass is making it where that bottom of the pocket is extremely smooth. A lot of times I've heard people talk about going right around the edge of the letters in their project and it's not cutting smooth. Here I want you to be able to see that yes, it will cut a very, very smooth, clean path right up to the particular letters that you have on your project. But it is very important that your machine is calibrated extremely well for this to work. Okay, so the pocket is actually done now and hopefully you can see how clean and nice it looks. Now it's time to be able to do the actual cutout. Now the first thing you may ask is, could I have done this all in one carving? And the answer is yes. I didn't really need to set up a second workpiece just for the cutout, but this is more of a habit than anything that I do, just to be able to keep it separate. And from the looks of this, this is going to 80 inches per minute, and you can see that it's cutting very clean. All total, this project took about 40 minutes to be able to carve. And the main reason that the actual cutout took, in essence, 20 minutes is that although I speeded up to 80 inches per minute, I did not change the depth of the pass. So it actually made more passes. This is the paint that I'm using. It's the Rust-Oleum Ultracolor. It's the paint and primer in one. Now, unfortunately, this can was almost out of paint. So I had to really shake it and turn the can upside down and do all kind of crazy things to be able to get it to actually get the coverage that I wanted. But the nice thing about it, this PVC works real well with the paint. It accepts it well and it holds the paint on without any problems at all. I did put on two coats and then I came back as far as the third one and just touched up a couple places that I had missed. And now for the final look of the sign back on the mailbox onto the um, home. And while I was there and I had completed the sign and made it look real good, it was also time to build a uh, paint the flag also because the flag had really faded and was more pink than red. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.